This is the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Join me as we revisit with our guests who have been on their journey over this past year and connect with them to see where they're at now and how they're going. Today's beautiful conversation is with the gorgeous goddess Simone. <sighs> Simone, if you might remember, was on episode seven and she's a one three. She's also quad right, which, you know, now that we're a little bit more into this experiment ourselves, you know, these kind of things matter. matter. How are you, precious? Girl, I am existing. I literally <laughs> changed my entire bio on Instagram to be like, I'm just existing. Don't expect things from me. Thank you. I love that. It's been great. That's, that's what we're doing, isn't it? We're just we're just existing. What's wrong with that? We kind of like put a negative spin on it, but it's like, what is the best thing to do than just exist? Right. It's like the the like cool version of being like instead of doing, I'm being. It's like no, I'm just existing. I'm not even being. I'm just like I'm just in this liminal space of existence currently. <laughs> that's my life. I don't know about I love you. it, girl. I it can. has been. Well, it's, it hasn't been a year because you and I banter back and forth a lot, but it has been a year. It's it's actually over a year since we debuted at episode seven. What a year. Do you want to, do you want to uh, take the bus back and <laughs> what's been okay. going on? Okay. So I listened to, I, I think this is a trend here, but I listened to our interview from last year from last November and I was like holy shit so I'm like what <laughs> like knowing now what I know now then I was like oh wow bitch like pop off like honestly like that was your moment and you needed to experience what you experienced to now be like oh yep that is what their lines are here for aren't we like my body is just like hmm, that's something I had to try cool 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 and it's just like I don't know I've had a lot of like a lot I got like a lot of different things that I've noticed from listening to that specifically I was like damn like she was trying she was trying a curl open heart was trying it was trying and I love that and I was like she's so cute like I'm so cute we love me but like not even being in a petty way just in like oh my god like where I was then where I am now like I just give way less of a fuck about like most things now <laughs> I feel like the deeper you get into your experiment the less fucks you actually give Oh, I feel you. And you know, the older you get, the less fucks you give too. It just gets, it's like the filter gets removed and the fucks go away. You you just said that about like, you know, you listened back to that episode. Was it confronting? Yeah. Oh my God, I loved it. Yes. Yes. I think so this year, like, I'm not even going to lie. This year has been very, very like emotional. I think I've, I've like confronted a lot of like shadows in myself, but also like experiences of like things that I was holding too tightly onto. And I've noticed that like, I have this thing where it's definitely like my mind, it's definitely my first line like existence of like foundations and how like I need to build foundations with people and how like that correlates with like making and ba breaking bonds. And I've been like really watching myself and listening back to that. I was like, damn girl, like you were fucked. You were fucked. Like you fucked yourself more like you were fucked. Like <laughs> you, you really like, played yourself here. But I get into this, like, because as a first line, right? Like building, building foundation is very important to me. It's like how I maintain safety and like connection with people. And listening back to myself, I was like, damn, like you weren't even taking your own advice. You were just like, fuck it. <laughs> you were just like, <laughs> let me just dapple. Because yes, there is a point where like your, your mind is going to take it take the lead and then do whatever it's want if you let it and um, obviously sometimes you have to right because I feel like this whole past year has been realizing like I don't feel bad when I'm not self I don't feel guilty I don't feel ashamed I don't feel any I'm like oh how am I gonna learn what I'm supposed to be if I'm not doing the opposite right yeah. like I don't find it off I don't find myself often like going into like transference for like my motivation but like when I do that is a sign point a signpost of like you can't fix all of these things, right? So I have guilt motivation. I'm sure we've discussed this in the last yeah, one. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. But I found that like when I'm trying to fix a bunch of shit that I have like no business trying to fix, like hoping I can do all of this shit, right? Like I'm hoping that I yeah. can fix all these things, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm just so sure that like somehow I'm going to find all these answers. And I've been sitting with this one person. I'm like, no, like none of this is even mine to fix to begin with like roll back that tape anyway as a reflector I'm not really here to personally fix that much shit myself anyway like I'm here to like address the things 
like here's a great example that you didn't ask for but i will give so. <laughs> i love you i'm finding my energy just going pinging and this is, is every time i'm in your energy i just go i'm like give it to me. go Yes. And so I just finished my year of service, like we were talking about before. And so for anybody who doesn't know that in America, we have like basically like the Peace Corps, right? Which is when you go to other countries and do things. We also have AmeriCorps, which is like when you work in America at a nonprofit working on whatever your thing is. And I just finished up my year there. And a great example of me being like so in my vibe of being like, ooh, motivation vibing is at the end you have an exit interview right and you have like a conversation about like here's things and I was like I wrote this like ridiculously long like paper basically for the moment I was like here are the themes that I observed over the past year here are the things that I like I've noticed in situations I've noticed here and I was like here's a long list of solutions that like you can fuck around with if not like I don't care like I'm not going to be affected by any of these things but like here is my very objective perspective to give you and the woman was like i've never seen somebody so prepared <laughs> like, <laughs> and i was like well girl if there's nothing else that i got you i got you like, i just collected all this information because i sat there like a couple hours before and i was like Bleh. like word vomited into voice notes and then also on my notes app on my phone and i was like damn there was a lot of things that should be fixed here <laughs> yes but I'm also not the one to implement those things that are fixed. Here's my observations and like things you could do. But at the end of the day, like I'm not in charge, so like get crazy. And it was like so great because like she actually was receptive. She was like, "Oh my god, like thank you." Like I've never gotten somebody like giving me like solutions. I've just gotten like problems that we've heard. And I was like, "That's what I'm here for." Literally, she was like, "Wow, like did you have you ever considered a career in HR?" And I was like, "Girl." <laughs> Do you know Girl. who I am? Have I? <laughs> I have. <laughs> oh, so okay. how, how did that feel to be so recognized in that moment? Like, oh my God, so that, oh, girl, I, so it felt good. At first I was like, are you punking me? Like it's yes. Ashton Kutcher around the corner. Like are we, are we playing a game? Like, is it the, <laughs> or is it the game where you're like, saying thank you but you're actually not gonna listen to me anyway because oh, that's like more yeah. annoying because I'm that's just, a like, game hey I still have yeah like I still have like friends who work here so I'm hoping you're not like just like fucking with my head just to like make me feel better because I'm it's not for me I don't care like at the end of the day if you don't put in these things that's gonna suck for like your whole organization but like I'm personally not gonna be affected by that so like yep rip. um so it felt good this organization does a lot of like um like conversation with each other around like giving positive feedback and like giving like having those like touch points and on my last day I literally was like an emotional hot mess because I was like no like why are you guys you're all loving me now but none of you said these things before like it was just, like it was like overpouring of people being like I know I realize now that when your energy's gone I'm gonna be so sad and literally since I left on Monday multiple texts like multiple like streamline messages of like I can't believe you're gone this feels so weird I'm like guys I love you so much like thank you for saying you miss me because like yeah. I don't know about the thing I'm sure you've had this like when the reflector leaves the space it's very clear it's noticeable it was like yeah. respected especially when they're like respected in the space if they weren't it's extra noticeable because like holy shit like why are they leaving oh my god yeah. but like it was it felt very good to be like recognized for like my perspective that was not personal right because i think that's what it comes down to like, i'm not here to be like you suck as a boss i'm here to be like here are things that i've observed that are happening yeah. and like maybe that is an aspect like maybe your skills that doesn't really align with theirs doesn't mean you're awful that just means like you guys maybe you should do some like, communication right like maybe we can find solutions and like i never noticed how like solution oriented i am until then because I'm not very goal oriented. Like I don't go into work and be these are the things I need to do. Yeah, like, ever. Well, that that's just not how I built. That, that, that's <laughs> the, all those right, the righty, the loosey goosey. Right, and so I was like, that's not how I like. I'm very like right now oriented. Like, what yeah. can I do right now? Like, I'm yes. not gonna be trying to think about. Because trust me, I mean, as somebody who has like anxiety disorders, thinking about the future or past is just like the most stressful experience of my yeah. entire life. So like, what can I do right now to focus on this? not like as a problem but what can I do like what can I do and I feel like turning that even with the youth that I would work with was very helpful because it's like I'm not asking you what you want to do in like six years like what do you want to do right now yeah. and 
I feel like that is something people aren't actually asked ever. <laughs> it's like, what are your five year plan? And like, what are your goals? And I'm like, ew, I don't even, my, what? Ew, what <laughs> is that? No. And like, the more I have the choices, I'm, I'm realizing like I am living my design without like using that terminology. And then, but then I can obviously link it back because hello, why wouldn't I? But it's just funny to like exist, like I've been saying, and be like, oh shit, like this is all making so much sense. The less I try, the better I. I'm thriving, you know. That's it. The less we try. (laughs) It's so hard to get there though, isn't it? Like like, this is the the beautiful message that's coming through. It's just like, fuck, we try so hard and and we don't have to because here's here's where here's where the hello, you know, the hallelujahs and you and I we sing together all the time. Oh girl, you know we do. (laughs) (laughs) But it's just like sing it with me. It's just like that. Da, da, we da. yeah it's it, yes. it, it, it's yes. all of a sudden like oh why did we make it so freaking difficult and I I'm I'm, I'm so excited for you because I'm hearing this of you just going you know what I'm going to take a chance I'm going to say these things because it means something to me not for any reason other than I feel like I need to say this it's like you stepped into Simone you Thank stepped you. into Simone and just went here you go and and to be recognized for that is so powerful and to have people actually reach back out to you and say, it's not the same. Your energy is, I've noticed your energy is not here anymore. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like, it feels fulfilling, but also feels like heartbreaking. It's like, wait, but I like, I miss you too. Like now I'm sad, but also thank you. Like, it's just like, I'm saying, I've been like literally, but also of course it's transitoriness being on right now. It's like, thanks. Like really we wanted that too add the actual emotional energy to it while we're at it. Um, Cause of course I don't have my throat or solar plexus like anything there and so both both of them are just like ding 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 and I'm like no <laughs> I'm like no one asked for this right now <laughs> but it's been it's been cool um and so yeah I don't know I've, I've been really enjoying that like the less I'm like actively trying to prove the less I'm trying to like fit into what they want me to be and I'm just like existing the more I actually can get done and the more I'm actually like just exi- like being myself and not trying to fit into the mold of like the job they wanted me to be more being myself than they're giving me the job that I'm good at and so that's been something I've been thinking about because I'm currently I'm just working for myself right we're doing breath work things here and there whatever I have a lot of ideas right I have a lot of things brewing I have a lot of sampling happening here <laughs> but I have no like current like this is what I'm doing right now you know what I'm saying because yeah. this is the time I think December is my time to just exist oh. and like lean back and relax and not be like let me just do all of these things right now before the new year starts and then be stressed out in, in January when it comes. No, bitch, I don't want it. I don't want that at all. Thank you. <laughs> no. Um, and so I've been sitting with that because I have a lot of ideas. Like, trust me, I like literally <laughs> my notes in my phone. Are I've been hits in it. I mean, you, as I said, you and I, we, we've, we've gone back and forth. I'm not even in your close circle of friends that I could imagine. And I just know with other people, it's just like, I've got this idea. I get this, I guess this is coming in. This is coming in. And it's uh-huh. literally like bombardment sometimes. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. have you got to that point as well of, of and another thing we've been talking a lot about in these catch-ups is just the way we're all recognizing, or I'm feeling that a lot of us are recognizing that the downloads, and I'm air quoting here saying the downloads, but it's like these these thoughts are coming in or these ideas are coming in, but not they're not most of the time they're not for us to action. We've just got to uh, uh, process them through our body and kind of like push them out either verbally or you feel on me, yeah. you're shaking your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I do this. I think, yes. And I think this happens a lot when I'm with somebody who's like been sitting in like something they want. And I'm like, but here's the idea. Like, I don't know. I don't know if this is like why this is happening. And they're like, wait, that's like exactly what I've been I was like, oh, well, like, cool. Because I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to do that thing at all. Like, I'm good. <laughs> it was like, but that's what I've been saying. The more I've been like leaning back and not really engaging as much, the more I think I'm then being approached, which is, I guess, probably the whole point. But like, yeah. in like the most cruel ways, like this woman, like, listen to this shit. I literally was like, I'm obsessed with you. Like, I'm obsessed with you. So this woman messaged me on Instagram and me and her never really had like a conversation. We've like had like here and there, like chat, like not like us. So we had like conversation, like, ha ha ha, like me too, like whatever, just like about like, things I posted remember and she messaged me and I literally was crying I, I, don't, I don't know I was like emotional she messaged me saying that the other day she was doing like a ritual and my voice 
came to her and like guided her through things and I was like what the fuck he's like we've never had a car like what and she's like it was like I want you to know how like how impactful you are I was like I'm literally gonna like cry and I did obviously because I'm me but like it was I've just never like had that kind of like profound like I'm like impacting you this much and I've never even like had that much of a conversation like I don't know I felt like really good and I was like damn like see this is what I like like you're telling me I'm doing things without me even knowing like thank you like I love you too ma'am so I don't know but that just like really ricocheted my obsession I was like shit I'm doing something I don't know what I'm doing but I'm it's working (laughs) whatever it is that's happening through me thank you (laughs) you're just being you right you're just (laughs) my little ball of like but I, I, this is the thing, isn't it? It's just like we we spend all of this time and, and you know, they, they all kind of go, you know, get into human design and we like freaking go down these rabbit holes and we've got to learn and we've got to be this and we're striving and we're trying to be all these kind of things and, and fucking more. But then all of a sudden we just like get to the point of we, we wear ourselves out, don't we? We just get, we get sick of our own bullshit and we're just like, oh, okay, I'll just be me now. And then all of a sudden it's things start happening and you're like, are you kidding me? It was that easy the whole time. But yep. you don't know until you know. Correct. Exactly. You don't know until you're like, wait, like, I don't have to like come at this from my mind. I can just like watch. And then when you like watch, you're like, holy shit, like that was sick. And what? And how? But also where? Like, there's <laughs> all the things. Like, mm, I actually don't really want to know. That was cool though. I liked it. <laughs> like, let's just do that again. <laughs> I don't know how we did it, but let's do that again. Oh, this is the woe as the third line. I don't fucking. I literally have been sitting here actually. I was talking to someone. I don't remember obviously, but I was talking to someone, and I was like, we were talking, and I was like, I honestly don't ever remember what I say right after I say it, and it's like cool because like thank you, but it's like sometimes problematic because if I was like arguing with people and I like say like something like in a rude way or like I'm just trying to like be like confrontational when I'm trying to like get up in there, I've like completely forgotten and they were like you were really mean and I was like I was mean like really like I don't I don't <laughs> I don't believe that I wasn't but I'm I was like holy mean. shit like right but it's like lol it's just me like absolutely just like not remembering because it's just once it's said it's just gone like I don't remember and that's like been such an interesting I think that's probably more of like a being quote right thing like I don't fucking know when it comes out it comes out and like if it was for someone great and if not like I okay I don't care um but I've been saying that a lot recently because at work I would like say things and then, like, five minutes later, someone would be like, that thing you just, like, said was great. And I was like, cool. Awesome. What did I say? And they were like, you don't remember what you just said? And I was like, mm, is that bad that I don't remember? <laughs> like, Do you think that's a body a body response? You know, when, when you when you say Maybe. something, or well, when you say and you can't remember, uh-huh. um, do, do you feel that's just, you know, some would say, <clears throat> excuse me, some would say, oh, that's, you know, some mystical fucking shit coming through you and you're all this. But it's just like maybe that's my body speaking when I can't remember it because my brain is literally out of the way because I can't overthink mm-hmm. it. I'm just like, bleh. What yeah. do you think? I, yeah, I mean, I I agree. I think that is very similar to the whole, like, passenger consciousness thing because, like, I compare all this to, like, you know, when you're driving somewhere and you, like, don't even think about the fact that you're driving and then you get there and you're, like, what the fuck? Like, how did I, what the fuck? How did I get here? That's kind of horrifying. I think that is kind of, like, once your body takes the lead, it's, like, you don't, you're just watching. You're, like, holy shit, that was cool, but also kind of horrifying. I don't remember getting here. <laughs> like, yeah. I think that's the same way. It's just, like, more of, like, an interpersonal thing. Like, that I find that doesn't happen as much when I'm, like, in the car with someone. I'm paying attention more because there's another human in my vehicle. But when I'm by myself, I literally... I'm always getting places and I'm like, I don't even like what, how, where, when, like, how did that happen? I don't remember getting the car, like, which is sometimes probably sounds kind of horrifying yeah. in like, if I heard someone, I'd be like, are you okay? Like that sounds, and I'm like, no, like, I'm not, nothing's wrong. I'm just like, I don't remember doing that. Yeah. I just <laughs> but I know out. I did it. I just, I just did it for a bit. I yeah, needed I a break. I, I needed I'm a here. little mini holiday. <laughs> I got here, which is cool, but I don't remember like turning or any of the things that involved me getting here. But you know, here. <laughs> but I, that's been a really fun part of my life that I've observed recently. Like I would always like, or you're like on autopilot and you're just like doing things and you're like, oh, all these things are done. That's so cool. And it's like, oh, I just did all those things. Like when you're listening to like a really good podcast and you like, clean your whole house and you're like, holy shit, my house is clean. And it's like, oh, I just did that. Oh, love that for me. <laughs> oh God. Does that happen with housework? 
Please tell me how not that as happens much. with <laughs> It's not it's not like it's not my go to. I'm just more yeah. saying like I don't love to clean ever. Let me think of a different thing. But either way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I know what you're I'm saying. I'm doing yeah. something that I like to do and then I realize it's over. I'm like, oh, because I was like so engrossed with this other thing. But that's also again, I think just like if I focus too hard on that one thing, it won't even get done. I'll be like, I like my brain shut off like fifteen minutes ago, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, girl. But it's been a trip. Yeah. I feel like so I was listening to it I was listening back to myself and I was just like damn she was like such a precious angel because like I feel like the awareness I have now is like you were just like so naive and, like so cute and, like and now I'm like bitch but also good I think you needed to be right then because I think if you weren't things would have taken like a much more intense and potentially darker turn earlier and I think you wouldn't have had the tools to be prepared to deal with them then yeah you know it's very interesting to watch back those kind of things of ourselves isn't it and to have that recorded like I obviously what we've all been going through like I I'm the same like I watched back a year ago when I first started this and you think oh Annie (laughs) you're such a people pleaser but it's just like how we grow and it's uncomfortable to watch that because we give so much sympathy to ourselves I'm like oh my god really were you oh that's cringy but it's just like no this is this is bearing witness to who we are. This mm-hmm. is witnessing it and just and actually going, wow. I think that anyway, but I know it can be confronting. Me, me too. It's I think it's both. It's like you once you like confront it, you can be like, holy shit! Like look at all of these things that have changed, like potentially for the better or for the worse, depending on what it is. But like it's all just awareness what it comes down to it's not like oh my god I hate me last year how dare she say that shit it's like oh my god like you needed to experience those things to learn where you are now and that's nothing nothing is good or bad like there are some good things not gonna lie and there's some bad things not gonna lie but like nothing is like that black and white there always is always that like nuance of like if that didn't happen what would have led you to this and like if that didn't happen like there's always like a what if game but like it happened so therefore like here we are <laughs> right mm-hmm. so i think that is the game everyone plays with like their human design it's like if you're not living your authority here's all the things that could happen it's like okay but like if all those things happen wouldn't that then lead you back to where you're supposed to be anyway so like what <laughs> such a good point okay. because we all need to journey through it as we need to journey through it and no one can tell you you can just right. again you know th- this is a common theme that's been coming out a lot isn't it over the last couple of months of people just saying take what you need discard what you don't and it's a very yes it's true but it's also like a a a, a flick of the hand to just sort of go oh well whatever I can say what I want take what you want but this what you don't it's just like "Hmm." but at the same time we do need to experience life especially unconscious third lines or conscious third lines like more so than us but still we need to experience life and yeah, this and is I, the journey. Right, literally. And it's also, I feel like this is the thing I've been noticing a lot. So like hot take, but not really a hot take, but like kind of. I've been noticing a lot of like, it's okay if like you aren't the person that people need to journey there with. Because I think I've need, I see a lot of people being like, I need to be the coach for everyone. And it's like, literally no, literally no, because you physically can't be. And like, I've noticed a lot of like, we're, I have a lot of depth, right? Like, as do you, as do a lot of people. I'm not saying people don't, but I'm saying, like, I'm willing to, like, go there with people regardless of where there is. And some people aren't. And, like, that isn't a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with your way of doing things. And I've noticed that a lot of, like, as of recently, I have a lot of emotionally defined friends and people in my life. And, like, obviously, I will never experience it the same way. Because how could you? But I'm very good at holding the space for that emotional container and not I'm saying I'm good as in like I'm saying good I feel like I'm good as in like I can acknowledge it and not be like oh my god your anger is really giving me anxiety right now or like whatever it is like I can honor like your emotions aren't mine and I can hold the space for witnessing yours and not shame you for them and I think that has been maybe one of the biggest breakthroughs of my past year is like seeing that like being shamed for like feeling feelings when somebody does come at you emotionally but then being like but I can still hold space for you expressing your emotions while also feeling the feelings that I have from you reacting that way right like I've just been noticing so much and I love it because I feel like for a long time I had this disconnection between like 
really amplifying emotional energy when I was around it. And now I've kind of been like, that isn't mine though. Like that isn't. Mm. And I also like grew up with a dad who's very emotionally defined and sisters and like a bunch of people who are around me all the time. And so like, I got very comfortable like noticing it, but I always like took it on like then had my own emotional reaction to it. Mm. And now as I've kind of like spend more time around people and like as an adult, I think I've been able to like kind of notice like I'm feeling this in my body because like you are feeling this so intensely, not because I'm actually mad about anything. Also, sometimes I am mad about things. Like, oh so, yeah, people, I'm, I'm a human. I think <laughs> we that are is human a having a human experience. <laughs> that's the part people don't talk about. Like, just because you're not a defined emotional being doesn't mean you don't have emotions. Mm. And I'm always kind of like, like I like break my neck. I'm like, um, yes, I definitely have had many times in my life where I like when I was younger, I was like super like super like cut off from my emotions. I was like, nope gonna be jaded way easier not playing that game goodbye or sometimes for a long time I like wouldn't know what feelings were in my body I was like like I feel this thing but like, I don't have like the language for it right and now that I've like grown up and spent so much time around people I'm like oh like I do know what that is and I don't really need to explain it I can just feel it and then like let it go because I found a lot of the people in my life who are emotional that I've been spending like going there with and spending time with have like been really struggling with like needing to name the thing so they can then release it and I'm just like damn like that, that's like almost the opposite of me like I don't want I, I don't need that like mm-hmm. I don't need that because I know it's not mine well for them it's like I need to name this because if I don't I just gonna just like fester and I'm like holy shit like, this is like maybe one of like the best lessons I've ever learned in my life because I feel like a lot of people who are emotionally defined like struggle with being like seen in those spaces and trouble being like held and it makes me like really sad because I'm like holy shit like I can't imagine having this like big emotion and being told like you're being too much right now like yeah. that is like oh that like hurts me and I'm not even them I'm, I'm like oh my god ow because even me I have a completely open throat when I like talk too much it like annoys me people are like you talk too much like you talk a lot like you need to stop talking so I'm like I feel like I don't talk that much like I do don't, <laughs> don't, don't play me I do I do but like when you use it in a way to like shame me for it then you internalize that right because I definitely have worked through a lot of that and still probably am because I'm an adult and like working through my feelings but like the shame that you have around people like shaming you from so young that you don't even notice it and it's like become normal as you get older but then you get older and you're like I don't like that actually I don't like when you say those things and like I just was so used to it that I like didn't realize it was actually something that's like super triggering and well, I think my biggest thing is people saying like you just talk a lot like on dates once someone told me I talk too much about nothing and I literally was like so hurt by that I was like I don't talk too much about nothing I have a lot to say and you're just not listening to me <laughs> you should be very thankful that everything that I'm thinking comes out right. I love how yeah, you were exactly. saying there before about just this journey of you and I'm kind of like and I got to, I, I want to air quote the word observer because it really gets thrown at us a lot. But there is something in that because I'm, I'm hearing that from you and, and you're feeling it. You're feeling that, that moment where you're just really detached. You, you, you understand completely what's happening. You feel it completely what's happening, but you are detached and you are observing. So it's like, if 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 that's where where the, what the this year has brought you, I just think I mean, because it is a beautiful gift to be able to detach, and not in a cold sense of not going. I don't feel you feel everything, so I just I just wanted to recognize that in you and just say yeah yeah, that's yeah. I guess that's what you know the the quotes and all the stuff talk about, you know, reflectors being the observer. That's an observer and embodiment of being able to experience life, but not really be caught in it because we get caught in it. We, we've all been caught in it. That's conditioning. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And it's also like, I've been sitting with since that, you said that, um, a lot of like my friends have like recently, a lot of my friends, because I think this season, I don't fucking know what's happening out here, like collectively and shit, but like shit is hitting the fan. People yeah. are struggling. And like Sam, like Sam, like I heard, not just you. And a lot of my friends have been like coming to me to like, just like, 
I just call everything soundboarding. I don't even like save anything anymore. I'm just like, they're all just soundboarding. Cause that's what it, cause I think that is like maybe like, maybe this will be an offer one day. Who knows? Right. <laughs> but like, I just feel like with my conscious on in gate 13, I feel like the space I hold is like potent in terms of like holding space for soundboarding. And because like, I'm not gonna, cause this is something I've learned recently, which I maybe I'm just like a piece of shit, but I'm just like not a question asker. Like, I'm just not gonna sit here and ask you a million questions. Like, I don't want to, like, I, I just, I, I, if something comes great i was talking to somebody like um i forget who like one of my friends and like they're a generator and they're always like responding and i was like i just don't have any questions like i have nothing to ask you like i'm sorry <laughs> and i was like so funny I'm the opposite. Was, like, even... i will ask you a thousand questions right and piss people off because they feel like they're they're being in the spanish inquisition it's just like i'll literally get in and go but why <laughs> yeah right and that, okay so Thank you, because that was leading me to this thought, which thank you for bringing it up. And I wonder, though, like this is the tea. This is the this is the thing, like the the, the nuance. I'm talking like the tea, us. not the gossip. The, the tea. tea, the tea, the tea between us. Is I wonder though, because I feel like since my body is a third line, I don't want to be asked questions. I don't fucking want to deal with it. I don't want to. And yeah. so in turn, when I'm holding space, people, I don't, I don't want, I wouldn't want a million questions in my way. And I'm just trying to fucking like word vomit to like kind of figure out what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, your first line is like, I want more information. Yeah. Like I need, I, I, right. So our bodies are so like, don't ask me questions, hard pass. And you're just like, but like, I need more, like I need more information to like understand this better. And it's like so funny because like that makes sense. Like mechanics at play. But like yes. in my friends, like she was like, I just like, I think I just need to ask, ask questions. And I was like, uh, okay. Um, and I literally think I don't know what to say. Like, here's some thoughts. And like, it ended up working out. But like, my brain, when I'm like not, when I have nothing to ask, I'm not going to just ask some random shit. Like, I'm not going to be like, well, here's a random thing that I was thinking. Ha ha. Like, I just I, no. It's just like there's nothing there. And I've been thinking about that because like, like, with my like whatever rightness, I don't have like, I'm not gonna be. I'm like, I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not yeah. focused like that. I'm not going to be like. But like, here's what you just said. And I'm wondering if like, this is real. I'm, no, my brain does not. Yes. does not do that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like funny. It's funny to think about because I'm like, I have so many friends who were like, since you just said that, like, let's follow up to this. And I'm like, what did I, when did I say that? Like what? And so yeah. it's just so funny to observe those differences that aren't like that huge, but like just the way we operate with other people. And so my friends were saying like, I really like how you just like, sit there and listen to me like you give guide. like I will guide I will like say things but I won't ask questions I always be like and then like what happened after that like I will ask questions that's more just like building the scene not like how do you feel about that or like yeah. okay like what trauma does this arise I'm just like I'm not a fucking therapist like, <laughs> how does I'm that feel in your body that. right I'm just like okay and so like then what happens like just keep keep spilling the tea like keep going and I've noticed that like interesting like that is the mechanics at play because I'm just not I'm not gonna sit here and like ask you stupid questions that aren't getting anywhere for me like maybe they'll help you I don't know I don't think so though because I'm not asking questions that are actually gonna be helpful they're just like nonsense me trying to pull up my ass and I've been playing with that because my friend my best friend she's an emotional generator she's a two four and me and her the other day we're like talking and she's like venting soundboarding what the fuck terminology <laughs> and she was like I really like that you like don't talk <laughs> I started like laughing. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, I like that you like aren't butting in while I'm trying to talk. And you're just like sitting there letting me talk. And I was like, did you want me to? She was like, no, like I don't want you to. That's the whole point. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I don't, I don't know. Like I asking questions. I don't have any any reason to ask. And she was like, because at the end, I think I know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Because I just was talking to you about what I want to do. And you weren't giving like weird feedback of like things I don't want to do. Because that's the thing I've noticed. When you ask certain questions, it then leads to like the results you want, not actually like what they were trying to get at. And so I've just like really opened the doors and like everyone sounds like this name. I don't know. Oh, if you I, want I me agree to talk, with you great. there. I, I totally, I totally feel that. Like in, in this space, it is it is better just to be an active listener. Absolutely, because everybody knows that. The questions come about um I think for me, it's very much like I need to ask questions when I don't understand where someone's coming at because for sure. my perception is always fucking warped and their perception is mm -hmm. always warped. And I've learned if I don't ask questions, I will distort reality. And that has got me yeah. into trouble in my 20s and 30s and whatever it is. But so, mm -hmm. but it's confronting for people because they're just like, well, what do you, what, what do you mean? I'm like, I just 
would like to understand more what you're saying so I can I can feel it a bit more right so okay. I can like support they, you in that they way feel, yeah they feel like fucking she's going in here with the bubble and it's coming right in it's just like yes I am let me in <laughs> yeah that's so funny because I feel like with me it's just like they're looking right they're feeling their feelings they're soundboarding and then they're like wow I know me better and I'm like do you like that's sick because I'm mostly just like repeating back to them I don't actually most of them I don't even talk I'm, I'm actually not even going to lie I don't really talk that much in these scenarios but like if I do I think that's kind of the art of the open throat though like I will only talk when I feel like I need to like I'm not going to just keep fucking inserting myself in this conversation and I found that like with my friend specifically this friend that I was talking to she was like holy shit like I know what I need to do oh my god oh my god and she was like, she was, like having this like psh- because like I'm not going to give you like personal advice I'm not going to be like here's my opinion of what you need to do if you want to know I'm sure I can like scrounge one up but like I'm not you I don't I don't know what will help you because I'm not you I can hold space and give you tools and like offer things but like I will never know what will help you because I'm a third line and I also will try a bunch of different shit just to see so I don't but know. in the same in the same scenario there if you've got a friend or someone coming to you often we do know what's in the best interest for them and yeah. even even though you say that like that's not my prerogative and it isn't our right it's none of our fucking business but there's uh-huh. there's a lot of times where we know exactly the right advice to give and in those times even though being quiet is the best because they need to get there themselves if they do say can you give me some advice? That's where the fucking throat, the open, completely open throat gets activated, I believe, because it's very much like, okay, this is exactly how it's come down. And um, this is my opinion on what your scenario, how does that sit with you? Yeah. I, yeah. So if somebody's actually like asking me for <laughs> yeah, advice, then yeah. I will offer it. But I'm not someone who will like, for advice unless asked for if that makes sense me and my friends have a very common thing like do you want like my opinion or do you want my perspective and I feel like Uh, those things are different I like because like my opinion is like me as your friend this is how I feel my perspective is like me watching this not involved this is what I'm observing and I feel like that is been very healthy actually for a lot of my friendships is like Maybe observations, whatever the term, I forget what the fuck I I think I usually say perspective, which might be the same thing, whatever. I just am like, here's the options, my opinion, my personal perspective, or like an objective perspective. And usually the objective one is asked for first because they're like, "Hmm," like, okay. And they're like, okay, but what is yours? I'm like, okay, well, like, here is mine as your friend or as your sister or as like whatever because like honestly as an objective party it's going to be different but as your friend who like sees a painter in this is like what I'm seeing or whatever and I think that has been like kind of cool because I think people communicate like that and it's kind of like I will only give you what you need not like what you ask for rather I'm not going to give I I don't even know what you ask for and if then you decide you want to know another thing, like I, I'm not gonna like, be like no, you can't know because you've waited too long to ask me. <laughs> but like, or I forgot because often that's also probably yeah. a thing, right? But like, <laughs> I've I noticed that. it's very healthy. Yeah, it's been awesome. I'm like, damn, yeah. is this like healthy communication. Is this what nine centered communication is all about? Like, holy shit! Yeah. Look do you at want us my go. opinion or do you want my perspective? I love it. Yeah, yeah, girl. We so you it. went to some- the um human design retreat conference so there was so you there was go the to the conference in july and yeah and then there was the in aura thing that i couldn't get to go to because i honestly had the dates fucked up when i got covid anyway so honestly it's probably better off oh, I didn't I saw do that, that. which I conference are we talking about are we talking about the one the one in the one in santa fe new mexico i went to that i went to that okay, one yep, yep. in july yep oh do you want to unpack that shit i haven't talked about that trip once yet with anybody so how how was that? Because you know, in 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 my space of looking towards doing a little bit more things down here, I'm actively watching, and I'm like, what well, what are they doing over there? What are they doing? And I saw some of the stuff come out of it, and I'm like, this is fascinating. At the same time, it made me feel very uncomfortable in my body, thinking, oh, I'm in. It, that looks like too. It, 
too much energy in one space. But that was just me on the outside looking in. How was it for you? <sighs> Annie, girl, you know, I've lost thoughts and feelings and things. Okay, so first of all, first of all, I, my body was like a hard no to going, even though I already bought all my shit. Once they sent out like the, um, maybe like a few weeks before, once they sent out like the agenda thing, like the schedule, my body was like, I literally was like ill. I was like, I don't want to go, but I've just spent like thousands of dollars to go and I can't not go now. Yeah. Like, I was going to be like, okay, I spent thousands of dollars. Let me just be like, just kidding. <laughs> no, I was like, I need to like, no, I need to go to experience people in aura to know if like how I'm feeling is actually like accurate. Right. So I went. Me my peer was also like three weeks late and I was super regular until this. Okay. So my period, super late. It was also a full moon. Girl, I was like, it was the most chaotic traveling experience ever. So I get there. It was pretty cool when I first got there, the day we got there. And then the next night, I got like deathly ill. I had a cyst rupture. I had a fever. I was like wicked sick. I my body was like, I don't want to be here. Like I don't want to, but we're here. So yay. And I was like wicked sick. I literally was like pacing up and down, throwing up. I was like, everything was coming out in like every direction. I was like dying. And I was like, damn, this is like so shit. My body is literally like, mm-mm. I also was probably hella hella dehydrated because it's so high in altitude and I'm like awful at drinking fluid and so that probably didn't help the thing and so my body immediately was like I fucking hate it here I don't want this at all at all and then the actual like conference was happening it was cool I mean I think that it was like not for me I don't think like the talks weren't for me like nothing like really was like felt aligned but I think I also needed to like go to know that like next year I don't need to go like I don't have to have that experience again right um and so like overall I'm excited that I get to meet Amanda I get to meet Sally I get to meet like a lot of awesome people my friend Kelsey my friend Sarah a bunch of people I didn't like know that much about and then I got to meet them in person I was like oh my god like how I love you and like got to actually like make friendships or also like see the dynamics I did not want to be a part of right like kind of observe all these things yeah and it definitely was like a trip though I think my body literally took a very long time to like figure itself out afterwards because I was like wicked sick my period also like then came obviously that day it was like everything everything came at once I was like dying which is fine I was having some kind of a mutation probably from existing um and it was fine like I mean like got what I needed out of it I feel like is the the like the the silver lining so to speak because I think that like I also had I think some other things around it of like I feel like I wasn't really acknowledged in the way I want it to be I guess like, I, I think I was not invited in or recognized or whatever the terminology was which is my own like at that point it was very my own like open heart being like okay like <laughs> okay because there is a special thing when like when we had the reflector panel like that felt really good to me I was like oh I can like talk openly and not feel like shame around it and then like later on I heard people were like talking shit and I was like that's kind of cringy like why were you doing that why couldn't you just say that to my face like all those things of just like the mm-hmm. nonsense that happens when you're in a group huge group of people um and so like I don't know I think it just taught me like who is for me and who is definitely not for me and something wrong with them I mean maybe yeah in some situations I'm like I don't want to be a part of that at all but like overall I think that I just got a better idea of the dynamics in person and so, like, then I could pull away from certain dynamics and, like, actually tell myself, like, that bond was not a thing you needed to be a part of it. Right? Like, all these things. It was just a lot. It was a lot. I think it was, like, slam pack so much shit in one sitting. But the silver lining really was, like, the connection I got to hang out with Amanda and saying her partner, like, the entire time. And it was, like, the best thing ever. Because I feel like if they weren't there, I probably would have had, like, an actual nervous breakdown, <laughs> to be fully honest. I was, like, I, I think I had up in that thick for that like yeah. intensive a time I was sick for like probably like, six hours I was like wicked sick and like I woke up the next morning like dripping in sweat I probably had like my people like broke I was like holy shit I'm like body what yeah <laughs> and then that morning when I woke up was the morning we had like the reflector panel so I was like okay ha, ha, ha. but also I think the reason I'm jealous I didn't get to go to in aura is because they kind of like honored things in a different way yeah. right because I'm indirect when I'm awake when I have to wake up at 8 a.m to go to like talks I feel like that's not my body does not want to be awake at 8 a.m. at all. I don't want to function. I don't want to do this. But I also like wasn't 
not going to do it. Like, hello, I just came here. I'm not going to not do these things. But I found that, like, I liked the, like, nighttime thing better because, A, I was, like, more awake and, like, enjoyed it. But, B, there was less structure, right? There was less, like, come sit here and watch this person talk for seven hours. It was, like, talk to each other, be in community, hang out, play games, have conversations, like, do things. And I think that is how my energy operates better. Like, Mm -hmm. sitting in a room, listening to people talk for hours, my brain just, like, yeah. Like, yeah. and, and then I'm like, I'm like, am I rude for like wanting to like color while you're talking? No, but like it feels like that dynamic, like it feels like in certain ways it was like super awesome. In certain ways it was like, oh. But I think that's like not because of the way they play. I think it's just kind of how the dynamic works out. Yeah. Because like I think I give like a lot of credit to like the planning because it's like an intense and you're taking on a yeah. big overhaul of plan. But I think that like a lot of conflicting feelings. But I think that overall arching theme was like no body no hard no and then like b if i didn't do that i would probably still be in this limbo of like not knowing right and so it's kind of like i needed to have that very uncomfortable and like awful experience to realize like it's just a no and i don't need to be part of that community and that's that's fine right like i have friends i have like people i've met from there and i think that like that's awesome i think the people who like are in that community are also like cool in their own ways like i don't need to be yeah. part of it right because i think also like every community doesn't need like 15 reflectors in one space anyway right like that's just that just well, it, can be, it void. can be very very confronting to have a bunch of reflectors right so i think that space. Oh, wow I think overall r- girl i know so i think overall it was like very cool and like fun to meet people in person and to like watch the dynamics in real life but also like very yeah very confronting very like oh like, mm. ugh, this thing I felt in my body before I even like was in this space and now I'm here I'm like oh my god but also I got to hang out with oh my god I was obsessed with her so Jonah's mom is also a one three the guy who like held the thing his mom is also a one three reflector and I'm obsessed with her me and her like still chat on Instagram all the time me and her hung out the whole time like she was like one of my favorite parts of like when I actually went to the talks because I would never actually go to the talks I would just like be at the space and like hang out with people me and her hung out like every single day I like, basically sat there with her like guiding her through her whole chart it was like it was like maybe like the best relationship I made out of the whole thing like I made awesome connections but that one was like oh my god like I love you so much and like you're literally so cute and like you're like we have like very, like our charts were very similar it was like very yeah. cool wow. so like be in order with her be like damn like what i'm in my actually i don't know who she is i want to say this right she's gonna be 16 i also i don't want to age her so i'm sorry homegirl but <laughs> whatever Cut that whatever <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah, like, i don't know I mean, it doesn't matter I'm, I'm sure i'm sure i have her her chart on my phone i'm sure i can look it up but like she is such a pure essence of like i don't give a fuck like this is super cool but I'm not going to prove myself to fucking anybody. I don't really need to. And it was like so fun to like watch her exist because she was so cute. She'd ask questions and she'd be like, I don't know what that means. Like, could you explain that? And I'm like, yes, explain it, please. I just, I don't know. I feel like she was like the best part of like the day to day things. But then the connections I made there were also really awesome. So like overall, glad I went and experienced it, but also my body was fucking pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I also didn't eat the entire time I basically like I had like dinner every day and like wouldn't eat the rest of the day because I felt so ill because my body was like why am I like what God, what? what a lesson to learn thank you right unconscious it's a third cure. line for it's, just it's, it's, the exactly. gift that keeps it's a pure experience yeah pure experience of third line body is like we're gonna find out we're gonna fuck around and find out and if you're mad after we find out like fine but you had to find out <laughs> oh my god if I didn't go right like say I was like okay I'll spend all this money and not go that would have been a way weirder and like more tumultuous for myself experience. I would have been pissed off at myself when I didn't go. Yeah, so you better right. go and have an awful time than not go and be like having FOMO that I didn't go. But as you know now, now you've got that you've got that that feeling in in your in your in your body. You you know, as you've said, yeah. I know now. I know now, now that I just I'm okay. I can move on. <laughs> yeah, and now I fully don't have FOMO because I'm like, lol. I don't want to do those things. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need to. Right, I want to be an aura with people who like are nourishing, not depleting. Right, and I think that's what it comes down to is like any connection, any space, anything. I don't want to go into it and feel like I'm literally being stripped of all my energy. I want it to be it like engulfed in it and like taking it in with like, yum yum yum, sing song sing song. Yum, not yum, like yum. oh my god, I'm literally gonna throw up all over myself from like, just sitting in this room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, beautiful soul. Let's Girl. wind this one up. Thank you. Oh, you want to end like that? 
No, I don't. I just, I just want to, <laughs> I want to, you um... want to debrief it solo. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I'm down. I, um, I, yeah, I, I, I just really enjoy these, these journeys that we're on and, and how they impact us. And I don't think we talk enough about that. Um, so it's really nice to sort of come back and go, these are, these are your experiences and this is the journey that you've made. And I thank you for, for sharing that and being fucking you who just goes, blah, I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. Yeah. Yep. That's something I've definitely struggled with because I'm like, am I saying too much? Am I oversharing? But also like, I don't care. Yeah. Well, should you? <laughs> it's just you. So we got to right. stop. We get, yeah. It's, it's. Um, policing ourselves <laughs> policing our own language like oh my god you can't say that sound. I'm like oh my god why not <laughs> why not exactly <laughs> who's for you is for right. you and who's not for you is not for you it's just like whatever right. and I'm not gonna, and I'm not I'm not gonna ever tell you who is for you or who is not for you because I'm not you I don't know what who what that is right yeah. I think that is what this comes down to is a lot of like the nuance around like just because they're not for me doesn't mean I'm going to shame you if they're for you and I feel like that has been a huge thing here. Like there are certain things where I'm like, I will kind of be like, that's cringe because this person is actually horrifying. But like, that's just my own, like, that's my own interpretation. Like, I'm not going to tell you what to do still. I'm just going to be like, oh, I wouldn't, but you do you. <laughs> like, because mm. again, my third one body is like, I can try it. Like, see what happens. Like, I'm a little, I think a little mischievous. I think of it. I think sometimes because like third lines are kind of like, <laughs> like I've tried it and you're not going to listen to me anyway. So do it. Sure. I have a third sure. line daughter yeah. and I feel like I know how that feels. Yeah. She's like, she is diabolical. Yeah. It is like, what? Dude, we tried. She's all a three the way. five and I'm just like, oh, oh my God. I love that. So, That's amazing though. Oh, three fives are my favorite. Oh, I love it. Mm. It's just, it's, it's hard being a parent to a fucking three five. Oh, though. I can, I can, and especially when you're right. a five one, you're like, what? <laughs> that's actually really inspirational uh, that sounds sick yeah she's like mom i'm just gonna like push your buttons a little bit tee -hee. oh yeah i love oh yeah oh my god it's a uh, fun I ride so much. i mean i can only imagine right like i have three friends in my family but i'm not a parent to any so i can't relate to that journey yeah <laughs> it's like great. yeah friends who are three fives friends are three fives it's completely different but when you've got a child you're just like, yeah. Oh, what is this next fresh new hell that you've wrought on me? But at the same oh time, <laughs> that's a conversation for another day because I realize we've been going for an hour and I've got children home, so I need to be mindful of my time. But that is a conversation for another day about the sidereal charts. Mm -hmm. So um, put a bookmark in that girl. Oh, Destiny and I are going to bring that one home in a couple of weeks about just journeying through different charts and yeah why not fuck why not play around a little because it i it shows up as i'm a three five in sidereal and i'm like mm -hmm. i kind of feel it that's why i know i love that, I love that. <laughs> yeah actually i think in sidereal i was a five one and i started laughing and i was like <laughs> love that it's like you i also get to know you get it you get a like oh i actually kind of do know what that feels like it's i would weird. also look at I was also like an emotionally defined generator with like everything defined except for my spleen. And I was like, sick, like, look at this shit. Like I, I'm down. I just like think everything is so interesting. Like everything is just information. Like yeah. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, I'm everything. Like, no, I don't care. I'm like, sure, sure. You see that as that? Sick. Awesome. I always cool. just Yay. go, for science. <laughs> oh, what's yeah. this new, fresh new rabbit hole you can send me down? Yeah. I get really excited. Yeah. I'm like, girl, we, we some things, around. some things are just go, mm, no. Right. No, no. Yeah. Other things yeah. go. Possibly. Other things our go. Our first lines are very like, we're going to try it. We're going to deepen ourselves into it because we're first lines. We're all going to be like, I don't want that though. Like, yeah. I don't want that. That's interesting, but no. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay. That's a no. A soft no, a hard no, and a, I could come back to that. Oh, maybe. <laughs> it's not off the table completely. That's great. Oh, Thank this you. is great, Annie. I miss you already. <laughs> I love your energy. I've always loved your energy. I love our sing songs, oh. and I'm really, really, really grateful for you being here and sharing and just chatting. And 
I wish I had more time, but alas, okay. I don't. I bid you farewell, fair maiden. My lovely lady, I love you. I miss you already.